H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Now we will try to understand uh, Jenkins. Uh, this is a website. From this website, we can uh, download the uh, Jenkins. Everyone of the based on your operating system. Okay. Uh, based on your operating system, download uh, download the Jenkins software here. Okay. See, based on the you see here if it is Windows, just click on this. So it is going to uh, uh, download the uh, Jenkins for the Windows. Okay. Once you uh, install, it's like just click next, next like that. Okay. There won't be any specific um, uh, attention needed. Just download. And uh, uh, just install. It's just clicking next, next, next like that. Okay. Once you install, okay. Once you install, like uh, this is uh, this is a place where we are actually going to configure. Okay. Once you download, I mean download and install uh, from uh, download over here. Okay. Download, unzip, and install. And then once we install, this is where we can configure. Okay, this is the place where you can um, observe the Jenkins. So everyone up here, navigate to the Jenkins dashboard. It means once you install the Jenkins, it, it will be installed on our machine. Like Jenkins, as I said, it's a, like a um, it's a continuous integration process. So which will which will help us to execute the some set of scripts. Uh, for each uh, push, right? That kind of configurations we can done over here. So now, see here, just open this particular website. HTTP localhost 8080. Localhost means which is going to refer the our local machine. Okay. Oh God! It's sometimes it is opening, sometimes it is not opening. One minute, let me check in Internet Explorer. Okay, fine. And then we'll start uh, from the initial. It, it's like inconsistent information. Uh, yesterday I was uh, checking whether uh, it is working. It was working up fine. Fine. See here. Uh, in my case, it's already downloaded. So now we'll also install. Everyone up here. Okay. Here uh, Jenkins, basically here if you observe here, here it is a, a, a file here. Okay, can you all here? Jenkins is a, a, a zip file. So once you zip, uh, once you uh, once you download, unzip it. Once you unzip it, you will you will get a folder like this. Now here you have some kind of setup here. Yep, I'm installing it. Actually, it is already installed, but uh, somehow it is not opening. Yep, 
here just you know we are going to say uh, just next next like that so next and here in my machine it's already uh, the that's the reason it is uh, giving me an option repair or remove first let me remove it It may take uh, 5 to 10 minutes, so I'll proceed uh, because it's behaving inconsistent. So I'm just removing the existing one. I'm trying to install. But meanwhile, if you all, if you want, uh, you can download from your end. Uh, let me ping this uh, website here. Now I'll install a fresh. But this may take uh, five minutes. So we'll see. We'll wait. I Meanwhile, well, probably you can download it uh, from your end. No, it's a bit fast now. Now it has been installed successfully. Now after you install, here this is the place where you have to go. Okay. It seems it's already tried. Okay, now it's coming up. See, it looks like this. Okay. Literally, it is saying something like, we'll wait. I think just use this localhost 8080. Okay. Okay, and go to this. Yep, now it's turned up. Yeah, fine, we'll close over here. Now see here, it will look like this. A Jenkins will look like this. So here basically uh, we create a job, uh, creating a job, like uh, in that job, uh, we'll mention that whenever there is a new push, whenever there is a new check-in, Okay, execute these set of scripts like that. Like those kind of configuration, we can keep in a, a jar file here. Let's let's go here. So on Jenkins dashboard, click on the manage links, uh, link left side. Manage links. I think manage Jenkins. Yeah. Manage Jenkins. Uh, link left side. On the manage Jenkins page, click on the configuration system link. Basically, here we are now. We are uh, talking. We are uh, we are going to discuss about configure how to configure how to um, uh, like uh, how we can configure Jenkins with the uh, this Eclipse and tool and all okay now see here so first it is asking us to click mini Jenkins link in the left side then the uh, and the Jenkins page click on configuration system link so here we are in the mini Jenkins page here it is asking us to click on this uh, configure system Okay, configure system link, and then here uh, we have a, a section called JDK. 
JDK means our Java. Okay, we are configuring the Java uh, Java related artifacts to our Jenkins. Okay, so because uh, uh, everything has to be done automatically, right? Uh, when uh, it's uh, like when there is a push, when there is a push, we wanted to execute. Whenever there is a check-in, we wanted to execute some set of scripts. So when we want to execute some set of scripts, we need uh, Java. Okay, so here uh, there is a um, section uh, to configure JDK. Yep, look at JDK section. Here, JDK section. Click on JDK installation, and here, uh, uh, see here. Click on the Add JDK button. Add JDK button. Okay, and then specify the JDK six in the name field and uh, select uh, and unselect the install automatically checkbox. So it is, it is asking us to enter some JDK name. Okay. And here uh, uncheck this. Okay. Then in the Java underscore home text box, enter the path of the JDK folder for, from your system, which is already uh, have done here. And basically, the other way, you know, yesterday we were discussing about environment variables, right? Like uh, this computers, computer properties, advanced system settings. environment variables okay, java underscore home whatever the value that is there in this java underscore home i mean in our machine whatever the variable that is there in the uh, environment variable java underscore home that value we have to give <coughs> here in jenkins okay which is already i have already done it here. Uh, i already done it okay i gave the name i gave the java underscore home path here so let me say delete JDK here. Okay. So it means for this Jenkins, I'm I'm config I am trying to configure this JDK. Okay. And then adding and and now we can configure the and to this uh, Jenkins here. So on the configuration page, look at the and section. Click on add and button and specify the and in the name field and unselect the install uh, automatically checkbox. Under uh, in the and underscore home text box, enter the path of the and folder. Now it is asking us to uh, you know, find out the and section. This is the and section. Then here and installations, click add and and give some name. You can give any name here, the appropriate name. And uh, uncheck this install automatically. If you say install automatically, automatically this and is going to be downloaded from the respective website. Okay, and then. Here, uh, and underscore home is there, which is again a kind of uh, an environment variable. Here, if you observe here, and underscore home, you have to give this path. Okay. Here, in my case, it's already done. Okay. So this is how, uh, uh, like, we we can configure JDK and to the Jenkins. Okay. And after that, click on save button. So here we have a save button. So we are clicking on the save button. So basically what exactly what we have done, we have installed the Jenkins and we have configured the Jenkins for, uh, with the uh, Java and we and then we have configured Jenkins with the Ant. Okay. Then here we are going to create a job. Job is exactly something like it's like a triggering mechanism. Whenever the there is a uh, a new check-in, okay, we wanted to execute some set of scripts. Those kind of things we can configure here. So click on create new job. Here, new item, okay. See here, click on new item. Basically, it's new. Okay. Now enter the job name. So here you can enter enter the item name. Okay, it seems it's been up, upgraded. Okay. So here we have to give the item name. Let me say B I H um, Selenium Jenkins. I'm giving the job name as B H Selenium Jenkins. Okay. 
select the build a freestyle software project okay so build a uh, build a freestyle software project build a maven 2v3 project like uh, so remember maven is a build tool right so you can build a maven uh, you can build a job based on the maven and multi configuration project so here it seems multi configuration project means uh, here if you read it uh, different configurations such as uh, testing on multiple environments platform specific builds and all okay so as of now i'm just uh, i'm just trying to explain a bit here i'm selecting build a freestyle software project and click on okay so when we say uh, click on okay it is going to create a new job here okay here again uh see so under source code management uh, select none it means everyone observe here yesterday uh, i was talking about repositories as part of third third party tools i said repositories like where we can keep all our logic like i said svn github tata is right now you can see here uh, this source code management okay if you observe here uh, cvs subversion subversion is nothing but uh, svn okay so if you are uh, no you can keep your logic uh, you can keep your java uh, your selenium scripts in uh, might be in uh, subversion or might be in uh, uh, what we say cvs okay so these are the some uh, uh, this jenkins is going to support the cvs and subversion so as of now actually we did not keep our scripts in subversion so i'm selecting just none here okay basically if we if we keep our scripts in subversion just select the subversion here i mean if we keep these scripts in uh, scn we will select the scn and here there is a repository url can you all agree here repository url means i know scn basically when once we save our scripts in scn there it will it will also have some kind of url we have to give that url here okay you have to give that url location out here so as as we did not keep the uh, scripts in scn i'm just selecting none here okay under the build uh, select invoke uh, ant see here under build invoke ant where is the build so here invoke ant it means for creating no actually we are creating a job in the job we are saying that uh, uh, basically here we can mention that uh, uh, no get all the uh, project related uh, documents i mean project uh, source code um, project related uh, document from this subversion we can configure that and then uh, no uh, here we can say that invoke and automatically this is going to invoke the and for this job we are configuring the and okay see so, apart from and you can see uh, execute windows batch command uh, it means a batch file a shell and invoke top level ma maven targets so here yesterday if you remember we discussed ant and maven right so basically you can invoke ant and you can invoke maven here, uh, maven here. okay and uh, post build action so here we are simply selecting invoke and that's it okay probably here uh, as part of targets one one just expanding the fit here and version and here as part of targets build file let me do one thing uh, let let us give uh, let us give a part of this dh selenium ant if you yesterday if you remember we kept the build file in this project in this location So I am going to this location. If you observe here, there is a build 
and it is a XML file. So here I am just giving you guess, even I never tried this. So here I am just giving the uh, this build location here, I mean build.file here. We will see what it is going to do. Sorry, it is XML. Okay. Now let me say, uh, yep. after this we will see what are the steps. Okay. Post build action. It means after uh, uh, build is done, what you want to do here. See here it is like, I know we are saying, uh, we wanted to generate some uh, XML results here. Okay. Here, after post build action, if JNU test results, publish JNU, JNU test results. Okay. Where is this JNU test results report? And here, we have to give this uh, this value. It means basically it is going to generate the results in uh, XML. So now if you all agree here, here uh, we are creating a job name uh, B8 uh, Selenium. Okay. And here uh, since there are advanced project setup. Give me it. We can uh, now pull out the project location from here and the see here build triggers. So build after other projects are built, build prioritically, call SCM. If you remember yesterday actually I was saying for each push there might be a probability like uh, we may need to uh, execute our set of scripts right. So when you want to trigger this uh, job, see here build after other projects are built, build periodically. Build periodically means we can basically uh, mention uh, how, how uh, like, uh, what to say, uh, in which sequence, I mean, every day or uh, every two hours like that, okay. So, these are some advanced configurations here, as I said, these are, these are the tools which are mainly for the developers, but just we are trying to understand in overall, okay. Now, we will come here and we have selected this, yep. I think we have configured all the things, click on save here. I am saving this job here, okay. Now let me go to the uh, dashboard home screen. Now everyone up there, now we have created this B8 Selenium Jenkins. Can you all agree here? Now we have created this uh, job here. This is a job. Job means which is going to perform some set of operations in sequence. Like once uh, one build is uh, once on the once the build is uh, uh, completed, I mean once one push is done, okay, we can uh, initiate the uh, this job. We can configure that. Like that is where we observed like build triggers. Now see here, there is a schedule, sch uh, schedule a build. So let me click on this schedule here. So if you observe here, building this B8 uh, Selenium Jenkins. So here it is uh, trying to do something over here. Okay. So it's it's basically it's like a kind of execution. Okay. It basically it is now it is performing the job. So while performing the job, we have configured like which project it has to uh, get. Like I have selected none because we did not keep the project uh, SCN right. So I I, did, I selected as none and I have selected ant uh, ant one. And I have given the build file. We'll see. Probably it might it might execute. You see. Here uh, from this Jenkins, you can do a lot of things. Uh, like uh, we can automate a lot of sequence of uh, operations. Uh, like so, it's a kind of uh, generally you know developer will. Uh, uh, build their uh, code and they will give it, give to us, right? Then after, you know, say they will uh, they will send an email saying that we have done with our build, so you can go ahead and execute with your scripts. So that kind of process will be there, right? So in that case, we can automate it. Once the developer has built their builds, when once they they push their logic to the once they push or once they build their uh, 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 like their uh, ER or jar files, whatever it might be. Once they are build, uh, once are uh, once they are build their files, okay. Say I we wanted to start our testing. So in in the tradition way, 
it will be like they will uh, build their file and they will say that we push the logic to testing environment you can start testing it so once we upload that uh, email we will go with the uh, uh, we will go with the testing in general but here we, we can automate that process like once the developer has built their files we can immediately uh, write a logic like here we can configure saying that once the developer has built their builds automatically execute the automation scripts okay that kind of configuration we can done here in the jobs okay it seems it is uh, it is trying to execute so here it is saying that it is executed for 2 minutes uh, 20 seconds we will go here Uh, so there is console output. See here, can you all agree here? Everyone can you agree here? If you remember this clean, clean was the part of the build, right? Init was also part of the build. Compile and execute. Okay. And see here, test run 1, failure 0, error 0, and time elapsed. And JUnit report. See here, it seems it is executed all these things in the background. And here it is saying JNUT report. It seems if you go here, if you refresh this, yesterday if you remember, uh, no, we uh, deleted it. If you refresh it, probably it will find a report here. If everyone up there, here we have a report. And here the uh, HTML report. And index HTML. Right click. open with web browser One minute, it's giving me a blank screen. Now, everyone up there, uh, actually, here in my machine, uh, you know, the time is this 18th, okay, uh, 2014, April 18 here. Okay, it seems it is executed now itself. Okay, so yeah, it's great. If you all up there here, like this. Uh, basically here of course we don't have any development build we will configure automatically like once the development push is done once the development check-in or once the development build is done I want to automatically trigger the automation scripts when you say automatically trigger the automation scripts it is going to automatically execute the scripts now if you observe here even it was not showing the front end for us okay now it was automatically executed the scripts over here probably um, for a better understanding what we can do here what I'm seeing here I hope everyone understanding over here see here we uh, we configure the ant related things and it has been executed over here okay see here it has been executed the results and it is showing the results here okay probably uh, if we can execute what will be the change currently we have this value right timestamp probably will take this time up and will execute one more time We'll see we'll, whether it is going to change or not. Okay, we have currently it is showing this timestamp, right? Now see here. Now again, let me go to this uh, back to project, back to dashboard. Now see here again. Uh, I'm scheduling this. Okay, so I'm scheduling this. So I'm clicking on this uh, schedule a now it will start again, uh, it will try to execute it. Everyone up here. Okay. Again it is going to delete uh, that set of files. And it is again it is going to execute in the background. We will observe whether it is executing the background or not. Uh, it basically, uh, you know, executes in the background. Now see here, uh, something, ha something is happening in the background. 
here you can find this so this is how like we can configure actually we can do as i said we can do a lot of things okay but again uh, no if you start learning jenkins the other people may use other tools okay of course these tools like we can learn in one or two days uh, no if we have a real requirement okay but here we are trying to understand uh, the overall concept okay now we'll wait uh, now again it is going to execute It seems it is done. In all of it, it is. It seems it is done. Now let me go to this uh, location here. Let me say console output. Now it is saying build successful. Okay, and so it is being executed with very less time. Earlier it was. Uh, it took around two minutes. Now it took around uh, fifty-two seconds only. Now if we go here. But now let me close this. Now let me refresh this because uh, here it would have deleted the previous files and it would have created a new one, right? Let me say a refresh. Now let me go to the index HTML. Open with web browser. Can you all observe here? Previously the timestamp is different. Currently, the timestamp is different. Can you all observe here? Basically, it is uh, probably it is taking me. Uh, it is treating this uh, server time. Okay, this uh, 59. It is taking some server time. Yep. However, can you all observe here? The timestamp has been changed. It means it is being executing these scripts in the background. Okay. So this is how you know we can automate the process. Like once the developers has uh, pushed their logic into. Uh, uh, once they push their logic or once they build their uh, uh, builds, we simply start executing the automation scripts. So it will execute and it will basically uh, send the results. Even we can uh, write a logic here, as I said earlier, we can send the email automatically here. Okay. So this is the overall idea about uh, continuous integration process. It means whenever uh, they uh, build, automatically we can start executing our auto automation scripts. Okay. Yep. Any questions here? H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab. Resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.